Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as we proudly present the Miami University Class of 2018.
Ladies and gentlemen, the faculty of Miami University. Ladies and gentlemen, presiding over our spring commencement ceremony, please welcome the 22nd president of Miami University, Dr. Greg Crawford, and our 2018 platform party.
Please remain standing and remove your hats for the entry of the color guard and the singing of our national anthem. The American flag flies at half-staff today for the tragedy in Santa Fe, Texas. We ask that you please remain standing as able to join in a moment of silence and solemn respect for those victims. Thank you. You may be seated. Welcome, Miami University, class of 2018. It is my great pleasure to welcome you and your guests to our 179th spring commencement. I would, <laughs> I would like to thank Alexandra Rose Hutz, class of 2018, who so beautifully sang the national anthem, and our ROTC units who presented our nation's colors today. We are deeply grateful for the dedication and courage of those brave women and men who are serving our nation in the armed services and those who have served in the past. Will all our veterans and those currently serving the United States Armed Forces please stand as you are able to be recognized.
Thank you for your service to our country. Welcome Miami students, families, friends, faculty, staff, and esteemed guests with us here today. Welcome to those viewing the ceremony live on the internet. Today we celebrate our diverse and unified Miami community, especially these new graduates who are joining a worldwide network of more than 220,000 Miami alumni. <laughs> Got a few of them here today. To the Miami University class of 2018, we are so proud of you. In the language of the Miami tribe, our namesake, Tupaliaka, meaning accomplishment, part of our heritage here at Miami. That is what we are doing when you graduate today, celebrating a meaningful accomplishment that you will carry the rest of your life journey. Miami class of 2018, please stand as you are able. Before we look ahead, let us look back to the people who helped you get here. Let's take a moment to recognize all of the parents, family members, friends here today who read you your first book aloud, who supported all of your activities growing up, who pushed you to study a little bit harder for that high school physics exam. Look around and find those special family members and give them a big round of applause. Maybe say that. Four years ago, you came to Miami as diverse individuals from different geographies and races, from a wide variety of cultural and economic backgrounds. Some were first in their family to go to college. Others were fourth generation Miamians. You probably were a little nervous, not sure how you would fit in, how you would do academically, how you would navigate your classes, how you would choose your major, what your future would be. All of a sudden, your outlook was not so crystal clear. Everything was new and different. Today, you leave this place with those same unique personal differences. But now you've become a proud part of the Miami family. Four years, you've lived, studied, learned, and even played together. As you leave here, we celebrate what unifies us, and we celebrate our differences. Those differences are the reason why this Miami family is so strong. This is what it means to be a diverse and inclusive community, accepting each other as individuals, respecting each other's beliefs, finding strength in our differences as one Miami family. Each of you has found your own space to grow and learn and to succeed and excel. You have heard me talk about the term inclusive excellence a lot. To me, it means that every Miami student finds that space with the support of the Miami family. That spirit doesn't go away. It will continue to propel you to greater success and satisfaction in your career and life. The same thing will happen when you go your separate ways. Your Miami experience will lead you in the right direction. You are well prepared and ready. You have benefited from the support system of your family and friends and Miami University. We are proud of you. We look forward to celebrating your successes for years to come. I leave you with this, my favorite line of our alma mater, sturdy hearted, pure of soul. This describes the Miami, the person that you have become. You do not waver in the face of difficulties and challenges. Failure was just a stepping stone to your success in your journey. You embrace it with humility and advance towards your goals with optimism. You do not stand by and watch others act. You stand up for what is right and care for your fellow Miamians. You achieve, and your achievement is not for your benefit alone. You find meaning and purpose in service not selfishness. You achieve without calling attention to yourself with deep humility, as our motto declares. You have led a wonderful life of generations of Miamians in this place. You are Miami. Love and honor.
Could I ask all faculty, current and emeriti, to please stand as you are able. <laughs> Graduates, you have been mentored and led by a distinguished group, the faculty of Miami University. You have been taught by the best of the best, the source of Miami's reputation as a top teaching institution. You traveled with them to study away and abroad. You sought their advice and mentorship. You worked shoulder to shoulder with them on research. Now let us thank our extraordinary faculty for their commitment and loyalty, their compassion and openness, their camaraderie and outreach that have infused you with the spirit of Miami. Class of 2018, please join me in enthusiastically recognizing our wonderful Miami faculty. Thank you, faculty. You are grateful for all that you do for our students and graduates in our university. I would like to ask all Miami University staff here today to please stand as you are able. We are grateful for our wonderful staff who support our students. From residence halls and dining facilities to the offices, the classrooms, and the beautiful landscaping. In every corner of Miami, our staff takes ownership and shows pride in everything they do. Thank you for all of your hard work for all of our students and for Miami University. Next, I'd like to acknowledge those on the stage today. You will hear from several of them later in the program. First, will the members of the Board of Trustees please stand as you are able. Thank you for your loyalty, your devotion, your love and honor. You are sturdy hearted, pure of soul. Now will the Provost Callahan and all of our deans please stand as you are able. <laughs> Thank you for your leadership and stewardship of our academic mission and your servant leadership as we achieve the highest standards of excellence. <laughs> Next, will the members of the President's Executive Council please stand as you are able. Thank you for your camaraderie and unwavering commitment to Miami University, your inclusive engagement, your mission-driven leadership, and the way you always put others first. <laughs> Will the commanding officers from our ROTC units please stand as you're able. Thank you for your courage and leadership in preparing the next generation of officers to protect and defend our nation, leading with integrity and love and honor. <laughs> Captain May, please join me at the podium. On a bittersweet note, <laughs> Captain Donald May will soon be reporting to a new post. Captain May, thank you for your service to our nation, we are grateful for your service and commitment to Miami University and all of our ROTC units for the past three years. We wish you well in your next command at Vanderbilt University. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce Mr. Mark Reidenhauer, class of 1982 and chair of our Miami University Board of Trustees. Thank you, Dr. Crawford, and good afternoon to the platform party, to our guests, and to all Miamians as we celebrate our 179th commencement ceremonies. As I look out over this sea of red, it is my pleasure, on behalf of the Miami University Board of Trustees, to be present with you today. This is quite a sight. Mr. Brooks, we are all Eagles and Red Hawks fans today. And now, to the graduates of the class of 2018. We are proud of your accomplishments and are excited as you embark 
on the journey that lies ahead. Somewhere out here is my daughter, Lauren Shunnison, who is receiving her second Miami degree. Congratulations, Lauren, on your achievement. I guess dad will sign your diploma. By definition, commencement is a beginning. As you begin this new chapter, I urge you to remember what an honor it is to be a Miami graduate. What comes, with that comes a responsibility to use the experiences you've had here and the lessons you've learned as a foundation for success in life, in service to our country, and to others. In 2002, the Board of Trustees adopted a Miami Values Statement that speaks to character, dignity, the rights of others to hold disparate beliefs while defending the freedom of inquiry and emphasizing the importance of moral conduct, just to name a few of the elements. You now join 221,000 fellow alumni as this university's ambassadors in all parts of the world. We look forward to you living these values as we all proudly represent Miami in the years ahead. You will be living in a world where the speed of change accelerates every day. Sir Ken Robinson, the most viewed TED Talk speaker, has talked about a revolution, which he defined as follows. A time when things you think are obvious turn out not to be. Things you take for granted turn out to be untrue. Things you always did habitually turn out to be ineffective. I couldn't agree more. Our world moves so rapidly these days with disruptive technologies, instant communications, and global connectivity is indeed revolutionary. And this, I submit, creates your opportunity. It is your turn to create the newest best something, to make the world a better and more interesting place. It is your turn to teach the next generation the values they need to thrive on change. It is your turn to lead your community and country with caring, compassion, and civility. It is your turn to be revolutionary. I might offer you a bit of advice. Slow down. In this world of real-time communications, take a minute to pause. Engage with your surroundings. Try to make a difference in someone's life. You will earn their respect and admiration while you continue to embody Miami's values. Do all this with the Miami motto in the back of your mind, Prodese Guam Conspici, to accomplish without being conspicuous. I hope as you go forth, you will remember the years that you spent here at Miami fondly, and that you will continue to maintain the strong bond that you have formed with your, and mine, alma mater. Every time I come up one of these hills, see the red bricks, and hear the bell towers, I still get a little twinge as I vividly remember the time I spent on this quintessential campus. I think you will too, as this place does something to our very being. Know that you are welcome back anytime. Remember the lessons you learned here and the values we all uphold. Be true to your family and friends. Be true to Miami University, and above all, be true to yourself. My best wishes to each of you and my personal congratulations on your achievements. Miami's code of love and honor begins, I am Miami. You are Miami. And in the language of the Miami tribe, Kiluna Miyamiyaki, we are Miami. Congratulations to the class of 2018. Welcome to the Red Hawk Nation. Love and honor to Miami forever and a day. <clears throat> Thank you, Mark, for your inspiring comments. Now I wish to invite President of Miami University's Alumni Association, Mr. Steve Schneider, Class of 1973, to please come forward. Miami graduates of the Class of 2018, congratulations to you and welcome as members of the Miami University Alumni Association. With your achievements, you are now a part of a family of more than 220,000 Miami alumni all around the world. 
By now, you're all familiar with this Miami phrase, to think that in such a place I led such a life. But that life is not over. Your Miami experience will continue only in different ways. Whether you end up in Boston or Burbank or Bangkok, you will bump into Miamians in the most unexpected places and you'll have an instant connection. Why? It's simple and can be summarized in that single Miami phrase we all know so well, love and honor. Love and honor. We hear it all the time, starting with our first days on campus. To our alumni around the world, these words have a meaning that may be hard to describe, but they do bind us together. So, congratulations on your graduation. Wear your new alumni status with pride. I wish each of you all the happiness and success as you make your impact on the world. And as you do, remember the saying, to think that in such a place I led such a life. Please keep your life and experiences at Miami an active and ongoing part of your life as you leave here today and not just a memory. Love and honor to Miami. Thank you, Steve, for your thoughtful comments. <laughs> I now have the honor of introducing this year's student body president and graduating senior, Maggie Callahan. <laughs> Hi, guys. Thank you, President Crawford. And thank you to our esteemed Board of Trustees, professors, faculty, and staff that are here celebrating with us today. If it weren't for all of you, none of us would be here, literally because you determined our grades. I also have to take this moment to recognize the other people who are here with us today. Now, I promised them I wouldn't do this, but hi, Mom and Dad. To all of our parents, family, friends, and personal mentors, thank you doesn't sufficiently convey the gratitude we feel for each of you. It was your encouragement and advice that carried us through to reach this incredible milestone. But most importantly, it was your enduring love that kept us going. That is what I want to talk to you all about today, love. I've, th I've been thinking about this moment a lot over the last year, realistically even longer than that. I would, I've been thinking about how I would feel, what I would say, and if I would even make it through this speech without crying. I watched dozens of commencement speeches to find inspiration. And most speakers talk about how their college experience shaped their future. I hate to disappoint you all, but I am no psychic. However, after watching the incredibly philosophical and ever so inspiring Will Ferrell give his commencement speech at the University of Southern California, it got me to thinking about my Miami experience. I started reminiscing on the past four years, and one word came to mind, love. No, I'm not about to sit up here and talk about Miami mergers. Congratulations, though, to everyone in the crowd with us today. But I am going to talk about how Miami taught me the true meaning of love, to love your journey, to love others, and above all else, to love yourself. College is a challenging time, from living independently and managing complex relationships to navigating demanding classes and struggling to balance it all. We've been through a lot. But now, if you can take a step back and appreciate all that college has taught us. We've learned to embrace our journey, because even on this roller coaster, with inclines, drops, twists, and turns, these moments eventually led us to where we belong. Miami has also shed light on what it feels like to be truly loved by others. Whether it was your parents sending you a care package on your first birthday away from home, or your housemates jamming out with you in the car on the way to McDonald's at 1 a.m. after a really long day, hey, lemon drop, <laughs> we have learned to cherish the people who will always be there for us. Lastly, what I think college has really taught us is to love ourselves. From finding a major we're passionate about and hobbies we never knew we had, college is about growing into your own and accepting yourself for who you are. So I challenge you all to take this love with you on whatever adventure you embark on next. Don't forget to appreciate all the inclines, the drops, the twists and the turns, because you understand it's all about reaching your destination. Don't forget the people who have shown you unwavering love and dedication. Never take them for granted. Don't forget to stay true to yourself and stay strong in your conviction. Lastly, 
Don't forget this place that taught you all of this and gave us much, much more. To all of you, thank you for showing me the true meaning of love. Because of you, I will always be grateful to think that in such a place, we led such a life. Thank you. <laughs> for one last time, love and honor to the Miami University class of 2018. I'd like to call my fellow students, Miami University student trustees, Megan Kremians and Haley Jankura forward. Would you all join us in reciting Miami's code of love and honor? I know you all know it by heart, uh, but just in case it's in the program on page seven. I am Miami. I believe that a liberal education is grounded in qualities of character and intellect. I stand for honesty, integrity, and the importance of moral conduct. I respect, I respect the dignity, dignity rights, rights, and property of others, and, and the right to hold express disparate beliefs. I, I defend, defend the freedom of inquiry that is at the heart of learning. I exercise good judgment and believe in personal responsibility. I welcome a diversity of people, ideas, and experiences. I embrace the spirit, academic rigor, opportunities, and challenges of the Miami experience, preparing me to make the world a better place. I demonstrate love and honor by supporting and caring for my fellow Miamians. And because I am Miami, I act through my words and deeds in ways that reflect these values and beliefs. With a deep sense of confidence and gratitude, I will love, honor, and make proud of those who help me enjoy the joy and privilege of saying to think that in such a place I led such a life. Thank you. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our university ambassador, Dr. Renata Crawford. <laughs> Dr. Crawford is truly engaged with students. She cares about our well being and establishing healthy behaviors, from exercising to study habits to eating habits. Dr. Crawford is all, also is incredibly accomplished professionally, and she advocates for women in STEM professions. She's an authentic ambassador for Miami not only the university, but also the values we hold here. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Renata Crawford. What a year it has been for the class of 2018. We are so grateful to all of you and proud of your accomplishments, and especially grateful that you have shared your time with us. You ran with Greg and me on Sunday mornings. You came to our Saturday morning workouts at Lewis Place. You showed up for spin and movies and pedaled your way through kicking and screaming. Some even danced with us a few weeks ago and delighted us with your moves at Charter Day Ball. You inspired us with your work on opening minds through art, serving so powerfully across generations. You dazzled us with your creativity and style at the Miami University Fashion and Design Show. You encouraged us with your research, impressive investigations that crossed traditional academic boundaries. But most of all, you were yourselves, marvelous examples of what we mean when we say, I am Miami. Greg and I so enjoyed being part of your community and your lives. This is when I wouldn't cry. Okay, you have been a gift to us and to the wonderful life we lead in this place. Now we have a gift for you as you prepare for your next step in your journey. Our speaker today will inspire you. He is one of our amazing and accomplished alumni. He is Miami. Our alma mater says that means sturdy hearted, pure of soul, and that is Brandon Brooks. This year, he started every regular season game for the Philadelphia Eagles through the playoffs all the way to the Super Bowl. Our motto, Perdesi Quam Conspeaky, calls us to achieve without calling attention to ourselves and that is Brandon Brooks. When the attention was on him, 
He used it to honor Miami. Our identity is love and honor, and that's Brandon Brooks. He is here this afternoon because of his love for Miami University. Miami Red Hawk, class of 2011, and now Super Bowl champion, Brandon, you inspire us all. You show us how to set the bar high and achieve excellence. When you pulled up your Eagle shirt at the Super Bowl and that red M appeared on national TV, the entire Miami family cheered. Class of 2018, families, friends, and guests, let's give a warm Miami and Red Hawk welcome to your fellow Miami alumnus, our friend and newest Super Bowl champion, Brandon Brooks. Won't keep you too long today. I know some of you got to uh, get to beat the clock, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, let me. There we go. Appreciate that. Oh, yeah, we're, we're good. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Crawford, for the very kind introduction and warm welcome. I am honored and humbled to be here today. Uh, this university has meant a great deal to me. It helped, me, helped mold me intellectually, socially, and morally. I am here today as a proud alum who continues to pursue his education towards my MBA and continues my life, lifelong quest for excellence in all my endeavors that was instilled and nurtured here at Miami. I also just happen to be an NFL Pro Bowler, a member of the 2018 Super Bowl champion Philadelphia Eagles, the team that wasn't supposed to win it. You like that? Um, the story of the 2018 Philadelphia Eagles and our improbable march to victory on Super Bowl Sunday is a story of love and honor, perseverance, and unity. And a lesson for all you graduates who are forced to face an onslaught of naysayers who keep trying to stamp out your dreams. Dream big, I say, we did in Philadelphia. My dreams were nurtured by my family and made a reality here at Miami. My goal and my family's dream was for me to graduate with a degree from this prestigious academic institution. Anything else after that was just gravy. Oh. There we go. We learned the concept of, uh, of love and honor here at Miami. It surrounds you from your first day that you arrive on campus and is the essence of college life here and is what Miami instills in you. And what you leave with when you go out into the world and seek to achieve excellence in any and all of your endeavors. Love and honor, perseverance and unity is a story of my life. Growing up in Milwaukee, coming to Miami, and concentrating on academics while playing football, getting drafted, and returning today as your commencement speaker. With your family at your side and the whole communi Miami community behind you, rooting for you, it should be your story too. As you move out into the world and realize your dreams, I've been in your shoes. I know the trials and tribulations of college life, trying to juggle academics, sports, a social life, trying to fit in, and questioning if you're working hard enough and will it pay off in the end. Of course, the big question is always, what does the future hold? Where am I heading? I know from personal as well as professional experience that while you may not know at that very moment, there's always something inside that keeps telling you you're headed in the right direction. And keep going, keep persevering. On this journey, you must love yourselves and those on the journey who, who are with you and seek unity among friend and foe alike, especially during these difficult times of division and strife within our nation. Far too often, um, you know, racially insensitive uh, instances go unnoticed. You know, unfortunately, it's a part of, you know, the American society today. Recently, there were two, you know, blatantly offensive racial incidents that were so egregious that students here at this university stood up and protested. I applaud those who had the courage to take a stand against hatred and intolerance. Your cries of protest were not unheard. They were heard loud and clear. I also want to take the time to applaud President Crawford for taking, action, for taking action in his strong stance against these acts of hate and intolerance. Regardless of our differences and our quarrels, as families often do, we must stand together as a nation. Because while we all disagree on many things, we all agree on the basic American principles of fairness, equality, 
love of country, love of family, and the freedom to practice the religion of your choice. I was raised and surrounded by love. I was taught to honor those around me who nurtured and cared for me. I was taught to honor myself by being proud of who I am and being the best I could be and make you know, others proud of me. I took being the best very seriously, too seriously in fact. I demanded excellence of myself. I demanded perfection, no mistakes, no screw ups. I wanted to epitomize perfection. Uh, I did not want to make mistakes until I did. And when that happens, or when that did happen rather, the world wasn't a good place for me. I had a secret. I needed help. I grew up thinking, you know, you had to man up, you had to suck it up, as they say. Boy, did I learn the hard way. I don't know how many of you know, but, you know, I have an anxiety disorder. I demanded perfection of myself, and when I fail, when I'm not that superhuman I'm supposed to be, my body and my mind turn on me, where I get tremendously ill for hours and can't play the sport I love. I missed five NFL games over my career because I couldn't handle not being perfect. I came to a crossroads where I had to make a decision. I would either cave under the pressure or get help, persevere, and rise to the occasion. I choose the latter because there are no diamonds without pressure. Um, getting help by seeing a therapist was one of the best things for me. And, you know, for those out there going through something, you know, you can't handle yourself. Never be afraid to ask for help or ask for help and get the help you need um, of the of all the, I guess, accomplishments I've had this year, Pro Bowl, Super Bowl, I'm especially proud of defeating the anxiety that has affected me in the past. Truth be told, feeling a little anxious today. <laughs> but I've learned through therapy to not worry or care about making a mistake. Why? Because the best thing about life is it goes on. How many times have you thought the worst situation and how often has that worst scenario ever came to fruition? Rarely. We are all allowed to make mistakes, to be imperfect, to be human. Learn that now. Listen to someone who knows. Learn from your mistakes. Keep pushing. Trust yourself and trust the process. Let me fill you in on one of my secrets. It's called the law of averages. Let me explain. Say you're 8 out of 10 player. Some days you'll be 10 out of 10, but damn it, some days you'll be 6 out of 10. I strive to be, you know, a consistent 10 out of 10, but you also have to come to grips that no one is perfect, and some days you're going to be off. We all have those days. There have been many doubters in my life, those who dismissed me athletically or questioned my commitment to academics, not thinking one day I could pursue my MBA while also playing. Yet there is, no, there is one person who never doubted me, never wavered on any front, she inspired me, encouraged me, nurtured me, motivated me, and drove me all over the place. And regardless of any athletic abilities I had or didn't have, education, my education, was my mother's priority. I, <clears throat> I remember it like it was yesterday. My mom talking to me and saying, I don't care how many guys I have in the NFL or how many times they play on national TV, you're there to get in the books. You're there to get an education, and I would hate to have to show up on campus and embarrass you, but I will. Uh, <laughs> uh, my mother, Dorothy Brooks, you know, she's my strength, my soul, my compass. Don't let anyone ever tell you for a moment that women are the weaker sex. That's fake news. Uh, I would also like to ask all the parents, guardians, and loved ones who push prodded, paid for whatever else it took to get all these graduates here today, to please stand along with my mother, father, and stepmother to be recognized for all your love and honor and your own perseverance and family unity. Today, as is as much as, uh, about you as it is about all these graduates. Without you, they would not be here today. Thank you. Um, you, may, you may be seated, I guess, for whoever's still standing. <laughs> uh, the notions of love and honor go hand in hand, and I saw it within my own family. I saw it within my teammates here at Miami, and I saw it within the Eagles. 
I've never been around a group of men closer ever in, a, in, a, uh, in my life, in any sport. We care about each other. We stand up uh, for each other, back each other on and off the field, pick each other up when we fall and when we fail. Regardless of race, religion, background, we are a blood family. In good times and bad, we are blood brothers. After we won the Super Bowl, the people of Philadelphia gave us a huge parade Philly style. We ended the parade at the top of the Rocky Steps with the iconic Philadelphia Museum of Art behind us, where each of us said a few words looking out on the masses of people who came to the celebration, the true meaning of persevering year after year until finally success. Jason Kelsey, my brother, the center on the football team and the guy who plays to the left of me, gave a speech that was somewhat loud, very emotional, a little edgy, and some would say a little on the wild side. You know, just Kelsey being Kelsey, but it was also memorable. Kelsey's speech epitomized the 2018 Philadelphia Eagles in our Super Bowl season. It came from his heart, and it spoke to the heart of our team. It spoke to our diversity, our strength as a team that stood together in good times and bad. It spoke to our individual weaknesses that we were overcome by our teammates' willingness to shore, up each, to shore each other up and to offer encouragement and help when we couldn't do it alone. It spoke to our brotherhood, our belief in the notion that I am my brother's keeper and the weight of my brother is not too heavy for me to bear. The 2018 Philadelphia Eagles were a constant barrage of negativity from doubters, naysayers, game after game, who we trusted in ourselves and each other. And like the rose that pushes its way through the concrete to overcome what appeared to be impossible, we attained what seemed impossible and made it, re made it a reality. The individuals who make up the 2018 Super Bowl champions are a truly amazing group of individuals who happen to play together on the same team. Malcolm Jenkins, one of the most authentic, passionate, and compassionate people that I know, uh, one of the leaders of our, of our team, before every game, would call us together and we would chant, we're all we got, we all we need. Um, and he also inspires us off the field, leading proponent for criminal justice reform, equal protection under the law, and is leading a national discussion on how to best reform the system and assist properly or formerly incarcerated people and help them reenter society. It's not. No. It is not easy speaking up about social injustice and equality in America, but you must. We all must. It takes courage because there can be consequences. Miami taught us all the love, and, the the meaning of love and honor, and you are now all a part of that tradition and are called to abide by it. Whether you agree or disagree with Colin Kaepernick's opinions and actions, he cares deeply about America and loves our country as much as any of us. But he's paying the price for his love of America and expressing his beliefs. Chris Long, the son of an NFL Hall of Famer, Howie Long, um, you know, a white son of privilege and uh, affluence, another NFL pro bowler, didn't have to wrap his arm around Malcolm Jenkins when Malcolm raised his fist during the playing of our national anthem to protest racial inequality in America. Afterwards, you know, Chris came to me and, you know, I kind of asked him, you know, why did you feel that, you know, you needed to do that? And he said, I think it's a good time for people that look like me to be here for people that are fighting for equality look like you. <laughs> then there's Nick Foles and Carson Wentz, two top competing quarterbacks who are both tremendously committed to their face and two of the kindest, most considerate people you'll meet. It was my job to make them both look good. One is a former starter, still in his prime, who game after game stood on the sidelines giving Carson constant encouragement, only to have roles reversed late in the season when Carson was sidelined with an injury and Nick took over. I'll never forget the image of those two standing together, holding up the Lombardi Trophy the night we won the Super Bowl. That's love, that's honor, that's perseverance, and that's unity. Professional athletes all competing and fighting for jobs. We have a saying in the NFL, our careers are like car side view mirror that reads, things are closer than they appear. Meaning the guy behind you is fighting to get your job just as hard as you are fighting to keep it. Malcolm Jenkins, Chris Long, Nick Foles, Carson Wentz, all are role models to be emulated. Not for their athletic prowess and the financial wealth it brings, but rather for their altruism, for their caring and compassion for the oppressed and those less fortunate among us. These are all life lessons, working hard and standing together, backing up your colleagues in spite of the competition for the same job or the spotlight, team uni unity, coupled with the quest for excellence and success in whatever path you choose, it all pays off with love and honor, perseverance, and unity. Love and honor go hand in hand. I first learned that here at Miami. Commitment to love and honor builds character, strength, and the willpower to endure and keep going in spite of the ob obstacles you encounter along 
the way. Sometimes it's hard being different. Being one among so many that are not like you, it can be isolating, fearful, lonely at times. Miami University is an over, overwhelmingly white university. It's hard for minority students here at times. There's no denying that. Most people don't realize all, you know, all any of us really want, regardless of color of skin, is to be accepted for who we are, to be appreciated and recognized for our character and our journeys to this place. We all have different paths, some easier than others, whether you're a newcomer to America, a person of color, or a woman in a male power dominated world, or if you're disabled, LGBTQ, we're always struggling to be accepted and to be recognized as an equal and treated as a contributing member of society. Acceptance, real or perceived, wasn't easy at first for me at Miami, but man went out the way, but a man, one man went out his way to ease my early journey here. He's, unfortunately, he's not here today, but a lot of student athletes know him, James Carsey. Um, didn't matter if you were a first stringer, walk on, hurt, healthy, freshman, senior, black, white, Hispanic, big or small, man or woman, Coach Carsey was there to help. He was tough on you, very tough, but as much as James loved Miami and his job, he was known for helping and giving advice to so many athletes in all sports. He had a heart of gold, and that will never be forgotten. He was always there for me and others with a kind word, back then or even now. A great man with a great soul, someone I try, will try to emulate every day by treating others the way he treated me, teaching me through his actions a clear demonstration of the meaning of love and honor. Thank you, Coach Carson. Perseverance. Almost there, I promise. <clears throat> Perseverance is crucial to success, if not survival. Most of today's graduates know exactly what I'm talking about. How many times did you get up uh, so bad that you felt like quitting, giving up, but somewhere, somehow, you found the strength, the will, the character to keep going, the strength to pick yourself up, uh, pick yourself up, pick yourself back up again, there we go. Now we're not talking about picking yourself up, you know, a day after you've been out at, you know, Brick Street, the woods, uh, you know, pachinkos, I think it's gone now, but um, <laughs> uh, I've learned perseverance from my family, but it has embraced and enhanced here at Miami. You go from trying to fit in to trying to stand out. My family's story is one of perseverance of struggle and sacrifice, all benefiting the next generation, me. My story is an American story not unlike most American families that struggle every day, not unlike many of you sitting in the audience today. For most Americans, um, white or black or people of color, women especially immigrants or native born, economic gains do not come easy. Americans as a whole struggle from week to week, paycheck to paycheck. Many are not even that fortunate. Many don't have regular weekly paychecks. In spite, America is still the land of opportunity where everyone is willing to work hard and persevere, should be given equal access Access, yeah, access to opportunity, regardless if you're a female, male, transgender, or person of color, white, disabled, gay, lesbian, straight, bisexual, or even if you're questioning your identity or gender. <laughs> access to equal opportunity is a basic American right, and embracing it and nurturing it is what will make America greater than we already are. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, and his, I have a dream speech 55 years ago on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Sadly, many in this nation are still being judged by the color of their skin rather than the content of their character. The judgment is based off skin color, on gender, sexual orientation, or birth status. Denies the many opportunities for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that many others in America take for granted. Our country's future depends upon the willingness to take a stand for equality and ensure our nation's lives up to its promise and its potential. That's the greatness of America, and it's your responsibility to nurture that greatness, protect that greatness, and make it a reality so that 55 years from today, Dr. Dr. King's words will ring true, and my children and your children will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. All of you, graduates as well as family members and those who are in positions of power and influence, must demand equal opportunity and look out for and help those less fortunate among us, because that too is a basic American value. A few years back, I remember overhearing people whisper, we'll never survive Obama. We did. Now I hear people yelling, we'll never survive Donald Trump. We will. 
This, <laughs> this is America, and we are the greatest nation in the world. Our diversity and our differences of opinion, style, culture, attitude, and whatever else stirs us up and makes this crazy democracy work as a nation is our greatest strength. So relax. We're not perfect. We make mistakes. We'll be okay. You'll be okay. Just love and honor your neighbor and those closest to you. Persevere, work hard, and keep fighting for what you believe in. And remember, we're all in this together, and we're all trying, trying our best to do what we think is right because we all love America and Miami University. So with that being said, congratulations, class of 2018. Love and honor. God bless, and go birds. Brandon, thank you so much for sharing your life and your story with us. Congratulations on all your success, and we wish you the best in the years to come, both on and off the football field. Um, I'm going to try something different here. The Philadelphia Eagles are uh, recording this today on video for Brandon, and they're all around the different audiences, but one of them asked me, if it would be okay if on one, two, three, if we would say, go Eagles. And I know there's a lot of different fans out there, but for our alum, Brandon Brooks, let's see if we can get this going here. So are my Philadelphia Eagles friends ready? Okay, one, two, three, go Eagles! <laughs> Brandon, would you join me next to the podium, please? Hello? Brandon, we are proud to formally recognize your contributions to Miami University, your excellence in the National Football League, and your commitment and inspiration as you pursue your life's goals. It is a privilege, therefore, for me to confer on you with the approval of the faculty and the Board of Trustees of Miami University and under the authority vested in me by the State of Ohio, the honorary degree, Doctor of Laws. <laughs> I now present you with this diploma and request that you be vested by Provost Phyllis Callahan with your doctoral hood. Congratulations. Stand here. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. At this time, I would like to congratulate all those undergraduates who are identified in the commencement program as graduating with distinction and honors. Graduation with distinction of Latin honors is awarded to undergraduate bachelor's degree students based on their cumulative grade point average. Only 17% of Miami undergraduates earn these honors within their divisions, and we now recognize their academic achievement. Students are graduating cum laude comprise 10% of the undergraduate Latin honor students. Will the cum laude graduates please stand as you are able and be recognized for your achievement? Congratulations. Students who are graduating magna cum laude comprise 5% of the undergraduate Latin honor students. Will the magna cum laude graduates please stand as you are able and be recognized for your achievement.
Congratulations. Finally, those students who are graduating summa cum laude have distinguished themselves by achieving a grade point average, placing them in the most accomplished 2% of all students. If you are not too exhausted from studying, will each of you please stand and be recognized for this extraordinary academic achievement? Thank you. Along with Latin Honors Distinction, Miami University also recognizes students who have earned University Honors, University Honors with Distinction, and Departmental Honors. Would all of you have earned these honors, please stand as you are able to be recognized. Congratulations. I offer my sincere congratulations to each of you on your exceptional academic achievements. Now I call upon Provost Phyllis Callahan to introduce the academic deans for the presentation of the candidates for degrees. Thank you, President Crawford. As provost of this great university, let me extend my personal congratulations to each of the graduates as well. Congratulations, well done. I now invite Dr. Jim Orris, Dean of the Graduate School, to present the candidates for the awarding of the appropriate graduate degrees. Good afternoon. On behalf of the Graduate School, it's my honor to acknowledge the accomplishments of our students here today who have completed their programs of graduate study. Will all of the candidates for a master's degree and the candidates for the specialist in education degree please stand as you are able. I have the pleasure to present the candidates for the master's degree and the specialist in education degree. The master's degree requires a minimum of 30 credit hours of coursework and scholarly activities beyond the baccalaureate degree. These rigorous programs prepare our graduates to enter the workforce as advanced professionals or for further academic study. With the approval of the graduate faculty, each of these candidates has completed all of the requirements for his, her, or their degree, and I present them to you with pride. The candidates for the master's degree in specialist in education graduates will be recognized by name at the respective divisional recognition ceremonies later today and tomorrow. Please join me in congratulating all those receiving master's and specialist degrees. You may be seated. Will the candidates for the doctor of philosophy degree please stand as you're able. It is my distinct honor to present the candidates for the degree of, of Doctor of Philosophy. The doctoral degree is the highest academic degree and culminates in a minimum of four years of study and research beyond the baccalaureate. After the completion of formal coursework, the candidate must pass comprehensive written and oral exams in the field of study and then write and defend a dissertation that makes an original scholarly contribution to the discipline. With the approval of the graduate faculty, each of these candidates has completed all of the requirements for his, her, or their degree, and I present these future scholars and leaders in science, education, social science, and the humanities to you with pride. The marshals will now direct the graduates and their major or hooding professors to the stage for the hooding ceremony and so that President Crawford and I can congratulate them. Lori Ann Banks, PhD in Educational Leadership, Major in Hooding Professor, Andrew Saltz. <clears throat> Alexander Robert Bergstrom, PhD in Chemistry and Biochemistry, Major in Hooding Professor, Michael Crowder.
Peggy Sue Larrick, PhD in Educational Leadership, Major in Hooding Professor Thomas Petter. Maya Popova, PhD in Chemistry and Biochemistry, Major in Hooding Professor Stacy Lowry Bretz. Michelle Jordan Schmall, PhD in Chemistry and Biochemistry, Major Professor Michael Kennedy, Hooding Professor Christopher Makarov. Lavar Lamar Smith, PhD in Political Science, Ma Major Professor Abdullah Sain, Pudding Professor Christopher Makarov. <laughs> Sean Ryan Taylor, PhD in Cellular, Molecular, and Structural Biology, Major in Hooding Professor Paul Harding. Please join me in congratulating all those receiving doctoral degrees. Thank you and congratulations to all our graduate students. We are so proud of our ROTC students in the Air Force, the Army, and the Navy. We are inspired by their courage, commitment, and discipline and their willingness to defend our nation, values, and freedom. I now invite Captain Donald May to return to the podium for the commissioning of our ROTC units. Thank you, President Crawford. It is an honor to be here today to administer the oath of office to these outstanding men and women I would like to take a minute to explain the significance about what you are to witness. Oaths have been around for centuries. However, it was General George Washington who first required all of his officers to pledge an oath to an idea rather than a person. Today's oath is a bit longer. However, the foundation is still the same. Officers pledge an oath of allegiance to the Constitution of the United States, the foundation upon which our country was built. Not only do they pledge to support and defend the Constitution, they are prepared to give their lives in defense of the ideals on which this country was founded. They are prepared to give their lives in defense of the freedoms that you and I enjoy every day. Ladies and gentlemen, the words you hear recited in just a moment are more than just words. They define us as a nation define us as military members, and will ensure the freedoms in our future. So without further delay, Midshipman Cadets, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, state your name, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I'll bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I'll well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. Good afternoon, indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you the newest officers in the United States military.
I now invite Dr. Kathy Bishop Clark, Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Applied Sciences, to present the graduates of her college for the awarding of their appropriate degrees. Will the candidates from the College of Liberal Arts and Applied Science please rise as you are able. It is with great pride that I present to you the graduating class of Miami University's College of Liberal Arts and Applied Science. Our candidates have worked hard, often taking non-traditional routes to complete their education. I continue to be awed and humbled by our students' motivation, inspiration, and tenacity. Our students are equipped with both a liberal education and an applied education. They are prepared to become outstanding professionals capable of meeting today's needs and tomorrow's challenges in industry, healthcare, business, government, and social development. Candidates, congratulations to each of you. I now invite Dr. Marek Dolar, Dean of the College of Engineering and Computing, to present the graduates of his college for the awarding of their appropriate degrees. Good afternoon. Will the candidates from the College of Engineering and Computing please rise as you are able. It is with a sense of our satisfaction and pride that I present to you our graduates who have completed their appropriate degree requirements. The sense of pride is deepened by the conviction that our programs in engineering and computing have prepared today's graduates to make this country and indeed the world not only a more technologically advanced and connected but also a more sustainable, safer, and healthier place. We are truly hopeful that social consciousness, global awareness, and cultural sensitivity will allow our graduates to solve problems and design solutions that advance the idea of improving the quality of life of individuals and general well-being of communities and societies. Congratulations to all of you. I now invite Dr. Elizabeth Mullenix, Dean of the College of Creative Arts, to present the graduates of her college for the awarding of their appropriate degrees. Will the candidates from the College of Creative Arts please stand if you are able. Standing before you are diverse and accomplished artistic citizens, studio artists, architects, designers, historians, musicians, actors, directors, and educators. They are ready to shape new frontiers, drawing from their experience and knowledge they have gained studying and practicing the arts. Their creativity and inspiration will challenge and inspire all of us to imagine a more meaningful and beautiful world. Congratulations to each of you. I now invite Dr. Mark Rubin, Dean of the Farmer School of Business, to present the graduates of his school for the awarding of their appropriate degrees. Will the candidates from the Farmer School of Business please rise as you are able. It is my honor and privilege 
to present to you this accomplished group of Miamians, equal to the challenge of becoming responsible, global leaders of all forms of organizations that are innovative, agile, data-driven decision makers who will add great value to their organizations toward creating a stronger global economy in which all benefit. We know they will uphold the characteristics of integrity, respect, and responsibility in all that they do. Congratulations to all of the FSB graduates. I now invite Dr. Michael Dantley, Dean of the College of Education, Health, and Society, to present the graduates of his college for the awarding of their appropriate degrees. Will the candidates for the College of Education, Health, and Society please stand as you are able. On behalf of the faculty of the College of Education, Health and Society, I present to you our newest leaders, professionals who will transform minds, hearts, and bodies, the very health and well-being of our society in powerful and positive ways. These graduates have worked hard to prepare themselves to make a real significant difference in the world. They are ready to go forth and teach, coach, mentor, lead, create, motivate, counsel, and care for the mental and physical health of children and adults, families, and communities. They are ready for the work of transforming the lives of those that they serve. It is with great pride that I present them to you. Congratulations, graduates. I now invite Dr. Chris Makaroff, Dean of the College of Arts and Science. To present the graduates of his college for the awarding of their appropriate degrees. It's only because they know we're getting ready to leave. Will the candidates from the College of Arts and Science please stand as you are able. Standing before you are the graduates of Miami's largest college, representing a wide range of degrees. From zoology to American studies, they are embarking on the broadest selection of career paths imaginable, all of which embody the intellectual framework, critical thinking, problem solving, and communication skills, the transferable skills that together are the foundation of a liberal arts education. Our graduates will assume leadership positions in an increasingly diverse range of careers in science and technology, business, education, health care, the government, and public service. Many will be jobs that don't exist today. They will bring about positive economic, political, and social change, and we look forward to seeing their accomplishments in the months and the years to come. Congratulations to each of you, and I'll see you to tonight. Now it is time you have all been waiting for. Graduates, please stand as you are able. By the virtue of the authority vested in me by the state of Ohio, with the approval of the faculty and board of trustees of Miami University, I hereby confer the associate bachelor's, master's, or specialist, or doctoral degree upon all those who have successfully completed the requirements.
graduates, please move your tassels from your right to your left. Turn and present yourself to the audience with enthusiasm. I now present to you Miami University's newest alumni, the class of 2018. You, you may be seated. We now come to the close of this ceremony, the final moments in your undergraduate or graduate journey here at Miami. In a few minutes, members of the Miami University Men's Glee Club will lead in the singing of our alma mater, which can be found in the back of your commencement program. As we sing, note the added verse that includes of all races, from all nations, declaring our global and inclusive mindset. Afterwards, the marshals will lead the platform party and faculty from the stadium. During this time, I ask the audience to please remain seated until all have departed. But before we sing together one last time and celebrate our graduates one last time, let me close this ceremony with a few thoughts to our graduates as you scatter into the world, applying your Miami education to lift and elevate everyone. First, Thank you for choosing Miami. You have enriched our lives. You have inspired us with your talent and perseverance, and you demonstrated the courage to pursue excellence with conviction. We know our campus is beautiful, the rolling hills, red brick buildings, stone bridges, towers, and arches, but the real beauty of Miami comes from within all of you. Second, please stay in touch with your alma mater, Whenever you happen to live or work, engage with your fellow Miamians. They are everywhere. Return to campus often and empower those students who will follow. Support Miami as we prepare a new generation of leaders. Your identity as a Miamian will give you confidence. It will give you courage. It will sustain you through the trials, even the most difficult challenges. It will multiply the joy of your successes in the days to be. Make it your lodestar. And now, I ask all of you, as your very first act as alumni of Miami University, to rise together as you are able and join in singing our alma mater with the best glee club in the nation. Congratulations and love and honor.
Jesus.